generous with all the books. Happy Valentine's Day. This is one of my favorite holidays. Yes, yes it is. I mean, what's there not to love about a day devoted to the worship of flowers and chocolate, right? And true to form, a day that I love, I like to extend it, celebrate the whole month, I've had my Valentine mantle going since, you know, January. Yeah. So to prove my love for this holiday, I have brought show and tell. Uh, my kid, when he was in elementary school every year, my goal was to outdo myself on Valentine's Day. And by the time he was in fourth grade, I was pretty much the master of the Valentine. Yeah. you're wait for it. I went through his little plastic animals that he had collected over the years, pulled out all the dinosaurs, and voila. <laughs> Is that not the cutest thing you have ever seen? I made 25 of these. Yes, I did. Super simple. Glue them on the top and spray paint the lid. I got these at Hobby Lobby and the Valentine. I mean, obviously there were kisses in here, but you're the best Valentine in 65 million years. Yeah. Come on, that is so freaking cute. Okay, so I know you're thinking that I couldn't outdo this, but oh, you don't know me. For fifth grade, we went with the uh, Don't Bug Me Be My Valentine with his ugly bugs. Oh. Isn't that sweet? <sighs> yeah. So the kid is in high school now and they don't really send Valentines. I mean, and if they do, they don't tell me about it. And mommy doesn't do it for him anymore. So I thought that we would have a little group Valentine here on booktube. I have come up with a readathon. Yeah, yeah. So it's called, can you see that? I heart a thon. I heart a thon. And I'm going to run it February 22nd through the 28th. Because another thing I love is procrastination. That's my game plan. I procrastinate the whole month and then I like to end it strong. So I'm going to let you join me in this endeavor. We're going to end February strong. You want to join me? Here we go. Okay, and the third thing I love, the third thing I love is cheating at my own game. So, there are no readathon police, there are no prizes. Do what you want to do. So, you know, if you just have time on the weekend, you could do a 24 and 48, or you could do a 24 hour readathon. You could just choose one prompt. And you know, this is golden, people. I have non reading related prompts for all the prompts. This is a win, 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 win situation because there are seven prompts here. Seven fun things that you can do. Okay, so jumping right in with the prompts and my TBR choices for the prompts because I'm going with the try to finish strong. So I'm going to try to finish seven books or actually more. We'll get to that. Okay, so number one, is your BFF, Best Friends Forever. This one, these are all open-ended too. I, I've, there's so many things to tell you here. These are open-ended prompts. Do what you want to do. So just some ideas for me for BFF are a buddy read. This explains why I've got so many buddy reads going on this month. It's because it's Valentine's Day and I wanted to spend it with all my buddies. So yes, do a buddy read or read a book that has been recommended by one of your bookish friends um, or take a friend out to dinner, IRL, yeah. Okay, so my TBR choices for this are <laughs> two tomes that I have started and hope to finish by the end of the month. It's going to take me all month long because these are biggins. Yes. 
Weighing it at 830 pages is The Luminaries by Eleanor Canton. And I am reading this with Will from My Bookish Empire and Steph from Time to Read, exclamation point. I love that part of her name. <laughs> yeah, so that one. And the other one is even weightier. I'm going to try to finish Christian Lovin's Daughter by Sigrid Unset. This one tops out at over a thousand. I've already read the first 100 pages. I read that with Sean, the book maniac, but just couldn't, just couldn't hang. So, gonna try to finish it up with Ange, and um, yeah, it's pretty, right? <laughs> that one got a double bounce. Okay, prompt number two is your book, Bestie. So for this one, I'm thinking you could read a book from your favorite genre. Uh, you could reread, I've got an itch. You could reread an old favorite, or you could buy a book for a friend. Yeah, that would be super sweet. I am choosing a favorite genre. And that would be literary fiction set in other places and other times. That is my favorite thing to read. So I have When the Emperor Was Divine by Julie Otsuka, and this one is a lightweight, only 144 pages too. The rest of these are gonna try to balance out these mammoth tomes that I have down here. So yeah, hopefully I will get to that one. Okay, prompt number three is Young at Heart. For this one, I'm thinking you could read a children's book, whether it's a picture book or um, a middle grades or a young adult. Those would all be lovely. No shame in the Caldecott or the Newberry or the Prince. Fabulous reading down there. Or read a book with um, an octogenarian in it. That would be fun too. I like those. Or what is our non-bookish prompt for Young at Heart? Oh, take a walk, be heart healthy. Yes, and enjoy spring if it's here where you are, or you know, maybe falls right around the corner where you are. Or maybe it's still winter, but take a walk. Take a walk while reading on the treadmill. I've been known to do that. Okay, but better off outside, in my opinion. Anyway, um, prompt number four, sweet treats. So, obviously the non-bookish prompt here is to buy yourself some candy, or a cupcake, or some flowers, do that. Or you could do that and read a book with them. So the prompt there would be, Grab a book that you've been wanting to read for a long time. So, oh, I forgot to tell you my TBR choice for Young at Heart. That is Winter of the Witch by Katherine Arden. This is a middle grade fantasy, the third in a trilogy and fabulous. So Young at Heart and then um, Sweet Treats. My choice is Wondersmith, The Calling of Morrigan Crow, another middle grades fantasy. I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna have lots of fun with those. Okay, number five. Number five is cruising. Yes, get in the car and cruise around town. I didn't do this as a kid because I lived out in the country. But my friends that lived in town, the townies, we were the townies and the beachies, I was a beachy. The townies cruised. They cruised around Main Street. Yes, they did. My friend, my BFF told me they did this. Anyway, cruising. So, for cruising, I would suggest an audiobook because I listen to those on my commute every day, Monday through Friday, and I love it. Okay, you could also go with a book with a car on the cover. What, or whatever else you think of for cruising. Um, for my cruising choices, I've got a couple of other 
books that are large-ish that I am reading over the course of the whole month. So the first one of those is Winter's Heart by Robert Jordan. I'm actually buddy reading this with Kate Howe and it is um, over 700 pages. And then the infamous Neil Gaiman, American Gods. This book is something else entirely. I, yeah, uh, I think I'm on chapter eight and the most recent thing that has amused me is um, the God and Nancy, his little song slash myth about the tiger's balls. Oh my gosh, that made me laugh, yeah. But this one also is a double bonus in that, you know, he's cruising all over the United States in this book, so. Good choice, Doris. Good choice for cruising. Okay, prompt number six. Oh, the non-bookish for that cruising would be obviously to take a drive. Yeah, buy yourself a new car. Sorry. Um, number six is, the prompt is a quickie. Yes, a quickie. So for that one, you could obviously read a romance novel or something that's quick to read, like a graphic novel or a novella. Um, for my choices, another buddy read here. Um, I am reading these little Faber stories with Sean, the book Maniac. So I think we're scheduled to read um, Sally Rooney's Mr. Salary and Patina Gappa's An Elegy for Easterly in February, but who knows? He might want to do it in the inner room or even take me to paradise. What do you think, Sean? You need to tell me which one is next. And as far as, you know, a non-bookish prompt for that one, I'm just going to leave you to your own devices there. Okay, and the last prompt, number seven, is Cover Love. A book with a beautiful cover or one that you bought based on the cover, yes. For me, that would be The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Ari Arikawa. And this one I have because I collect books with cats on the cover or about cats and this fits both those bills so yay and as a side note it would also work for cruising look it's got a little van down there so fun yeah and for the prompt the non-bookish prompt for cover love I've run out of ideas so what do you think I mean if you were me you could you know make your bed that day since I don't do that on a regular basis. Or maybe if you do make your bed, you know, you could like leave it unmade, go go crazy. Buy yourself a new throw pillow, wash your sheets. I'm not coming up with anything good here, sorry. Cover love, you know, cover love, enjoy. So I hope that some of you will join me. I am looking forward to spending time with you and my books the last week of February. Um, oh, the tag is hashtag, or if you're a child of the 80s, pound sign. I'm kidding. Hashtag I heart a thon. A thon, A-T-H-O-N. Hashtag I heart a thon. So tag me so that I can find your videos or link them down below if you make a TBR video. I would love to see I will be obviously vlogging because it's been a while. So, yeah. Thanks so much for watching, and I will be back soon. Bye.